Well, you're right. This was a surprise. I wasn't expect. This is officially the strongest beer of the, the trip. 17% so far. It's the backpacking beer adventure. Let's get hopping. We just left Avery and uh, that brewery is incredible. That's been one of the most important breweries to me in my whole life. Like just some of the beers that I've had from them. They're like from the early 90s. I know we're hitchhiking. <laughs> and uh, to actually go there and meet Adam, the owner. Ah, yes, dude. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> um, should he hop in the back or? You have to hop in the back. Can I hop in front or? Yeah, you can hop in front. All right. I'm hopping back. Cool, cool. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, we're actually going all the way to Salt Lake, so I don't know where you're going, but if you're going to uh... I'm going to Longmont. Okay, yeah, that'll get us going. Jump on the back seat or what? Why would you want to go to Utah? <laughs> I got a buddy in Salt Lake City there's good beer in there. It's an underrated beer city. Maybe you're a Mormon. Hey, yo, don't sleep, cause while you sleep, you're dreaming. While you're dreaming, your bitch can't fuck with my semen. Drink up on the tandem bike, man. <laughs> you're like the Nuggets in the first round. Get out of here. <laughs> what an exit. <laughs> we got our tandem out of here. <laughs> Cody McKendrick. This is Bewilder Brewing. We opened up about a year and a half ago. We hope to kind of specialize in a lot of European lagers, English pub style beers, but now we have a little more of a variety, you know, almost out of necessity than anything. We're brewing right now, we're brewing one of our flagship beers, which is called Fresh Sesh. It's a session strength IPA, combination of Citra, Mosaic, and a little bit of Galaxy Hop, Chico yeast, American Ale yeast. So nice kind of crisp, clear, hoppy beer. So we're brewing that today. You're welcome to get, get up on the platform if you want to see what's going on in the, in the tanks. So there's the mash in there. Moving over this way in a minute. And this is the first batch. We have the two boil kettles in here. So 10 barrel system, but two kettles. Let's just go back to back a little more efficiently. It will travel through the heat exchanger and across to second fermenter there and yeast will go to work. It's a smaller operation. We began as a draft only location with the intent that eventually we'd expand a little bit into packaging, but we didn't build the brew house with enough floor space to ever deal with distribution packaging. We have a little one head can seamer over there that um, actually is pretty efficient for what it is. We're actually pretty impressed with it. It takes up a real small footprint. It certainly has the potential to be outgrown at some point, but that's, as they say, a good problem to have. If you're outgrowing your canning machine, hopefully you can afford a new one. This is our our really fancy high-tech manual keg washer. Okay, okay. So that keeps the, <laughs> the kegs clean. This cool. is Steven, our super manual fancy hey, brewer. Hey, good to meet you. Yeah, every brewery I think should have a little bit of the personality of the owners or, or the brewers. And we're really into like traditional English, traditional German styles. And we wanted to really showcase those styles. We feel pretty good about our ability to, to brew a really diverse set of beers, yeah. even though ultimately we want to narrow that down a little bit more. Yeah. Do you still have the homebrew store or is it yep. still? Yep. Yeah. We have, yeah, we have one just north of here in Ogden, uh, about 45 minutes and one about 15 minutes south. Okay. Um, and they, they were busy all last year when people were home, yeah. homebrewing became big. Oh yeah, I'm sure. But it's trailed off now and so it's a little slower and then people buy online now. Yeah. So it's definitely a tough time to be in the retail business, but 
Um, you know, we still have a really good core group of customers and you know, yeah. employees down there, so it's still fun. So this is just a cold room. We had a, a good friend, a local artist, do the mural for us. We deliver some kegs to different bars and restaurants, and I see the size of some of their walk-ins. I'm very, very thankful that we have this. Super old building, it's been a bunch of bars before we moved into it. Every other window was cinder blocked in, and it was a concert venue, wrenched in, all the plumbing. That was a hole eight feet deep right where we were standing, and we had to refloat the floor. And it's kind of a lot of money and a lot of work to make a place look like you didn't put a lot of money and a lot of work into it. So we gotta figure out how to get beer from here to there. Maybe we'll hard pipe across. Yeah, we'll figure yeah. something out. Something creative. Yeah. When people get into their dream of like opening a brewery, and myself included, you see the price tag of the equipment, you're like, oh, you know, that equipment's not totally unreasonable. Like we could probably get a loan for that. But when you start seeing that the cost of the utility upgrades for the facility costs more than the brew house, then it starts to really add up and it's a reality check. We have more into plumbing and electric than we do into the stainless. And we have a lot in stainless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So thanks for pouring some beers for us. Yeah, absolutely. It gave you kind of a flight. We've got some of our most popular beers. Cool. So I'll start with the Kolsch then. Yeah, so that's, you know, we try and make a real traditional Kolsch. We use, you know, Köln malt from Weyermann, which is brought over from Köln, Germany. A um, little bit of wheat, a little bit of Vienna. We only really switch or departure from tradition is Auertal Blanc, which okay. is probably not, which isn't a traditional hop for that beer style, but we like the flowery, almost like white winey character of that hop how it pairs with that beer. Uh, so real crisp, super easy to drink. Yeah, it's like an elegant sipper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's our English strong bitter. It's not strong or bitter by American standards, but you know, it's got enough supporting bitterness to back up the bigger malt character of that beer. It drinks really balanced. Also really clean. Yeah, thank you. Well, we're lucky. We don't have to push anything right now because we're not meeting distribution contract deadlines. And when the beer's ready, we go on and hopefully we can always be in a position where, you know, a couple of extra days on a beer isn't gonna hurt us. This is the beer that's brewing behind yeah, us. Yeah, that's what we're brewing right now in that kettle, a steam. That's fresh sash. So that's our session IPA, it's 5%, right around 45 IBUs. Great um, nose nice on it. Nice and crisp and dry. A heavy hand of Citra, a little bit of Mosaic, a little bit of Galaxy. So our number one draft beer, which is, you know, I guess not a surprise because so many, you know, so many American craft beer consumers look for hoppy beers these days. Yeah, so to have one you can uh, sip on for a while too. Pretty good. That's our blueberry pomegranate sour. Is this one of the first sours you've made or? No, we've done a, quite a few. Our raspberry is our full-time sour and then we kind of rotate different stuff behind it. We've done pink guava. I've got a dry hopped cherry sour back there. It's coming out next week. I'm gonna do a uh, mint lime next week. That's badass, it's really well done. It's like yeah. fruity and then the sour comes in perfect. My preference is to have a little less tartness. I don't let the kettle sour go as far as some people will. Like I try and stop the pH right around three, four. I don't use any artificial flavorings or anything. It's just fruit puree. It turned out freaking awesome. Yeah, it's fun. You wanna try these guys here? Yeah. So this is our four rye's rye PA. Um, it has uh, malted rye, which is pumpernickel. There's a lot of different varieties of rye. Um, and then it has flaked rye, uh, red crystal rye from Simpsons, and a little bit of chocolate rye. So four different ryes in it. And then the hops are a, a hop blend called NZH uh, 101, and then also some Galaxy. The first sip is wiping away that sip too. Oh yeah, it's definitely a bigger beer, right? Yeah. yeah. This is a full-time beer for us. It's called the Deseret IPA. And Deseret means honeybee. Okay. Um, and Utah is the Deseret state, so it kind of goes there. And we put a bunch of honey in it, which throws people off because People think of honey and they think it's gonna be sweet, right. but the honey ferments away. Yeah. So you get a little bit of the honey, very, very little in the flavor with the citrus hops in the nose. It kind of gives it a florally citrus, almost like orange blossom honey aroma. And they wanted the color to look like honey too. Good work there. Oh yeah, yeah. You're definitely gonna hint to the honey. Almost in the body <laughs> a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it's really it well attenuated. It. it finishes out pretty dry. Both of those are charity beers. One benefits the Pride Center, one benefits the Leukemia and Lymphoma Foundation. It's cool when you can brew good beer, have a beautiful place for people to drink it, and you're giving back to the community. Yeah, historically, I mean, you look at where the brew pubs were in, in Europe, especially, like they were cultural centers of the communities. People gathered there to celebrate, and they gathered there to mourn, and they gathered there to do business, and they gathered there to socialize. We wanted that to be what we built here, a place where people could gather and have beer. Well, thanks for sharing all the beers, oh, taking yeah. us around. Thanks for coming awesome. down. Yeah. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Yeah.
Cool. We did it. I'm Gus, I'm marketing specialist here at Epic Brewing, and yeah, we're right here at the headquarters in Salt Lake City um, at 825 South State, and this is kind of where everything all started. This was actually a pho restaurant. Um, had a little drive through in the back, kind of a weird layout, if you didn't notice. It was tiny, it was Utah's smallest tap room. Yeah, so we expanded, now it's huge. Epic was founded back in 09. Dave Cole and Peter Erickson actually came out here for brine shrimp. They're brine shrimp farmers. Kind of a weird leap, huh? Water tank over here. We get our water from snow melt, just like everybody else in Salt Lake. Yeah. And we take out the minerals in the water or add to the minerals so that we can get really true to style with like a Belgian beer or with like an Irish style beer. We can add those. Uh, minerals make it hard water or like a soft water. The brewers are always talking about the nuances and like it's it starts right at the beginning, right? With yeah, the water. It's mostly water beer, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is mostly water. Um, the grain and mill are in there. Um, they get led up right over here to our mash tank. Mash, lauder, kettle. Um, we have the 10 barrel system here. These are just some of our fermenters. And yeah, so our brewers get to do their thing and they get to watch the State Street traffic. A lot of characters come by here. This is quite a bit smaller than the Denver facility. We get to do a lot of our experimental beers and the smaller batch stuff here. Our brewers get to play around. We've got these smaller fermenters, like 20 beer barrel fermenter right there. So we can do a really small batch, really dial things in before we get bigger and go to like the 80 barrel size fermenters and everything. We have uh, one of the biggest uh, barrel aging operations uh, in the West. It's not just these 10 or so. <laughs> That's badass. It's nothing like barrel aged beer. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, it's fun. That's <laughs> so good. And that's really it for, for here. It's a pretty small place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can head back into the tap room. Yeah, have some beers. Yeah. Cool, cool. That's what you're really here for. <laughs> <laughs> See everything, hear the story, and drink some awesome beer. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for pouring these beers. Excited to taste them? Of course, yeah. Yeah, we've got some fun flagship type uh, styles, and then we've got this one on the end is interesting. I'd, okay. I'd like you to try it, so I'm gonna keep that a surprise okay. so till the end. Where should I start? You should start big and bold. Heck yeah, I like your style. <laughs> That's my style too, so. Big Bad Baptist? Yes, I'm sir. Guessing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we're here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good. So is this one of the first beers you guys brewed? It's one of the first beers I remember drinking from you guys, so. Definitely, this is a lot of people's first epic. They tried the Big Bad Baptist and that's kind of how they remember our name. It was right there at the beginning that we started brewing this, but it wasn't our first stout. Yeah. Our first one was actually 825 State Stout. Okay, that's one, it's a little lower ABV, correct? Exactly, it's a milk okay. stout, lower ABV. Um, Still tastes great, just not as exciting, I guess, as yeah. the Big Bad Baptist. It's not too sweet or anything, like some stouts can be, and, but there is sweetness there. Get the whiskey. Yeah, it keeps <laughs> you nice and warm in the winter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Second one is our Brainless Golden Ale. Pretty classic style Belgian golden. That goes down smooth. The yeast ester is coming through. Uh huh. So that next one is uh, Brainless on Peaches. We had a whole bunch of Brainless beer. Um, didn't know exactly what to do with it. Someone said, hey, let's just throw it in a barrel um, and add some peaches to it, see what happens. It tasted worse and worse and worse. It just wasn't going right. And then all of a sudden it just started tasting good. Wow. And then it started tasting better and they were like, quick, let's pull that out of there. <laughs> yeah. People started drinking it and they were loving it. So we decided to expand. Now we've got brainless on cherries, brainless on raspberries. So this is Imperial IPA, just another one of our early on IPAs, more on the West Coast side. Ooh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I've had this before, but that is refreshing. Uh -huh. uh, some of those hazy IPAs that are everywhere are good. And I'm, I know you have one or two, but uh, it's nice to take a sip like this and like just 
bring it back a few years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little flash from the past. Yeah. Um, Still delicious today. This other IPA, it's a coconut IPA. We what? sit on a lot of coconut here and we thought, what else can we do? Let's let's throw it in an IPA. So we put a ton of coconut in there. Coconut so. keeps like coming on stronger. I like it. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't get that like sunscreen coconut you can get from some coconut beers. Yeah, yeah. It's more like it hits you right after. This beer is called Juniper. Um, and it's fermented base, it's orange peel and lemon peel, and then filtered water. And we present it as a, a gin-like beverage. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's definitely a like, real light body. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, freaking juniper. I like it. You can, you can make cocktails out of this. It's 17% ABV. This is 17%? That is 17%. Oh, <laughs> um, wow. And so, yeah, that's exactly what we're going for. Well, you're right. This was a surprise. I wasn't expecting. This is officially the strongest beer of the, the trip. 17% so far. Early going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll be surprised if anyone tops it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's up there. Well, thanks for sharing your beers with us. Of course. So where else are you guys headed on your trip? So we're, we're heading to Jackson next, maybe as soon as tomorrow. Okay. Jackson, Wyoming. Uh-huh. And we're going to film at Melvin and Roadhouse. All right. Yeah. Nice. I'm fucking stoked. Melvin's one of my favorite breweries. And my mom and sister live, like, real close to there. They live in Alpine. Yeah. Oh, that's so. like, isn't it in Alpine? Oh, yeah. It's like a mile from their house. All right. <laughs> Perfect. It's been nice to get a ride from a barn. <laughs> yeah. How many of you ever seen uh, a white okay. dude and a black dude driving down the road on a tandem bike? This is bruising tours? Like you guys uh, like it's called food. hopping, the backpacking beer adventure. So we're just going okay. to breweries and like having a good time. I hope you marry seven wives in Utah. <laughs> I love beer. It is delicious. Here's to another one.